Hi everybody, welcome to this Saturday night stream, although you may be watching it on Sunday morning, depending on whether I get to upload it. Now, in view of the fact that it looks like Boris Johnson is on his way out, I thought we'd have a look at one of the prime candidates, and this is the chart here of Liz Truss. So the three people I looked at before I decided to do Liz Truss tonight was uh, Rishi Sunak, obviously, I think he's the bookie's favourite. And I do believe that Dominic Raab would have been in the running at the one point before the debacle of Afghanistan. He was the foreign secretary for those of you in other countries, but uh, when the whole Afghanistan thing unravelled, he was involved, he was on holiday, and he hadn't dealt with it particularly well. So Liz Truss was moved into his position as a foreign secretary. She's now been moved into her position as Brexit secretary, I think. Um, so uh, Dominic Raab was president of Davos. He seems to have the right credentials. He's sort of the right age in his late 40s. So I thought he was up there, but now he seems to be out. Then there's Rishi Sunak, who incidentally is a Taurus. As a lot of you will know, his father-in-law is one of Ind India's richest men. Rishi comes from the banking world. I think he was with Goldman Sachs. Then he established his own kind of uh, investment banking stroke equity finance investing firm called Thalimi Partners, which, as you know, I covered before on a stream about a year ago, and I said it was rather odd that the name Thalimi should be close, so close to Thalima, which was the religion established by Alistair Crowley. thought that was a bit curious. Plus, there was the fact that his equity firm Thalimi had been investing in Moderna prior to the whole COVID era. So I, I thought there was a bit of a conflict of interests going on there. Now, in his own right, Rishi has apparently failed in all the businesses that he's done on his own, off his own bat and he's kind of more riding on his wife's riches because of her husband but I would add he did very well at Southampton University he was a Fulbright scholar going over to the US Fulbright scholars are very much like Rhodes scholars which Bill Clinton was when he had the scholarship to Oxford and they kind of your cherry-picked future leaders so you know, he, he looks like he's going to be a leader at some point, but I don't know about right now, because when I looked at his chart, there wasn't an awful lot going on. But I must just say, we don't have his time. If we knew his time, could change this whole picture. We don't have Liz Truss's sign, a uh, time of birth, or it could change the whole picture as well. But as I say, Rishi Sunak, he, he's definitely going to be there in there at some point. Why I think Liz has an edge is because she's a woman. And when I was looking at the World Economic Forum Future Leaders website, strange noise down there, um, 90 80, to 85% of them are women. So there's definitely an emphasis of pushing women into positions of power, because I think it disarms people. They are prone to not thinking women are going to do the same sort of bad things men do, but we know from Jacinta Ahern and, and Angela Merkel, they, they tough and they nasty, and they do some pretty damn horrible things as well. They can be quite tyrannical, but, you know, they pose with a smile, it's long hair, it's still dangly earrings, so it all looks all nice. Okay. Liz, now, as I've discovered with a lot of Tory politicians, a lot of them were initially Labour. So she had a kind of Labour family, same as Michael Gove, Labour family. And then they find their way into the Conservatives. And I, I, I do believe she, she's another one of these that went to Oxford or Cambridge. I think it was Cambridge. And uh, she was, I think it was her that was part of the Lib Dems when she was at Cambridge. So what I'm guessing getting from all this. Look, I know people can change their mind. I know they might start off thinking I'm definitely Labour and then they might get a bit older and thinking, no, I'm more of a Conservative. You know, as, as you grow, you mature and you can change. But I, I do feel with a lot of these politicians, it's a career. And just the same as if, if you were wanting maybe to be an accountant, you'd have a look and you think, who's going to offer me better opportunities, KPMG or Pricewaterhouse? Who's going to offer a better salary? Who offers more travel? Who offers more perks, right? And that's how you choose. You don't choose, well, I'm philosophically aligned with KPMG or Pricewaterhouse. I mean, and I think it's the same with politics. It's where they're going to go to find a political home that'll offer the most opportunity. And with her, it was probably the Conservatives. Um, she was a Remainer. Now she's the Brexit Secretary. She did quite a good job, apparently, as Foreign Secretary. She's, you know, rather unobtrusive, gets the job done. Uh, apparently she lacks imagination and flair, but she is able to deal quite well with people. She gets it done. Got a lot of placements in Virgo, similar to Michael Gove, actually, although she is a Leo. To come back to Rishi, he's kind of, um, he's, he's not He's apparently been backed by Dominic Cummins, the former advisor of Boris, and maybe Dominic is using Rishi in a way to stab Boris in the back because he resents being pushed out by Carrie Antoinette. 
or Wocahontas, as some people call her, because um, she was uh, behind the split in the previously formidable team of Johnson and Cummings. And I believe more revelations are coming, possibly as early as tomorrow in the Sunday papers. And there are rumours that one of the new allegations about Boris will involve another infidelity, which, I mean, probably, <laughs> in my view, is neither here nor there. Uh, the most thing I hold against him is the green taxes and the carbon neutral and the cost of living crisis more than anything. Um, in terms of COVID, well, I can't say it was as bad as some international leaders, but I, I'm really off them all in a big way. But I probably would con still con prefer a Tory to Keir Starmer, who was a member of the CFR, Council of Foreign Relations. And when he was the chief prosecutor, or maybe it was the attorney general, uh, don't get me on that one, it's one or the other, he kind of suppressed the investigation into Jimmy Savile and also into the grooming gangs. So th th he's not a person who's interested in the people or can be trusted. So let's have a look at Liz's chart. This is from Marjorie Orr's website, so thank you for that. I find this a really complicated format, but in the middle we've got her natal placements. So we've got Sun in Leo in a wide conjunction to Mercury in Cancer. Mercury and Saturn are conjunct in Cancer. Ambitious, business-minded, probably doing quite a good job, potentially, on the whole Brexit trade deal, right? Um, I think that does indicate kind of conservative values, so maybe she was a conservative all along. She's got her Venus in Virgo there. They've got here uh, Pluto rising on a Libra in Ascendant, but that's a guess because, of course, they don't know her time. So we can ignore all these house placements. Mars in Cancer, yeah, understated, worms her way around, not necessarily direct. She's quite strategic and maybe lacks a little bit of confidence, which apparently is why she's very um, full on. She stands too close to people when she's talking, so maybe there's a slight lack of confidence there. But uh, that can be endearing, like it was with Theresa May, when they're not too overt. Oh, sorry, that Mars is actually, I, sh I backtrack all that because that Mars is a transit. Her Mars here is in Taurus, so that gives her a huge degree of tenacity, stubbornness and determination. And apparently she is an incredibly determined person. Uh, Jupiter in Aries gives her a flair for politics and a lot of ambition as well. And we think her moon here is in Pisces. Well, it's probably in Pisces because her time would have to be very different for it to have slipped back into Aquarius. Um, moon in Pisces, not so sure about that. I think that probably confirms that she doesn't really have a proper political home and could easily drift between philosophies. Um, yeah. So let's have a look what's really important here. Here we have solar arc Saturn. Sorry, these are solar arc positions going around the outside. I think I call them transits. They're solar arcs. But the important thing here, Saturn solar arc Virgo is beginning to weave within orb of conjuncting Venus here in Virgo. And if you have a look down here, you will also find that the transiting Jupiter. Um, Let's see, maybe it wasn't on that one. Let's just go up as well. So anyway, Saturn is conjunct Venus, which I think is quite important. A career step, ambitious, um, a lot of um, career attainment. Saturn is all about sort of ambition. Coming into line with Venus seems a long-held ambition and quite a lot of responsibility. Certainly her managerial ability, her strategic and analytical ability will be needed. Let's have a look. We have Jupiter. Yes, I knew Jupiter was in the fray. There we go. We've got Jupiter there at eight degrees of Gemini. That's in terms of the solar arc is squaring up to Venus, right? So that's quite a pleasant and lucky one. Very fortunate one. That's why I think highly likely that something could be happening. In this chart, we've got solar arc Mars conjunct Jupiter, which of course would be a very, very good sign, but we don't particularly know her position of the moon because we don't know her time. So that might not be as exact. If her time is around lunchtime, well, that's pretty much exact, and that's another big feather in her cap and another very favorable position. Let's see what else we have here. Okay, we also have the Saturn down here, um, Neptune, solar arc Neptune, 23 degrees of Capricorn, is opposing her na natal Saturn at 23 degrees of Capricorn cancer. That's an interesting one because in political terms, Neptune op op opposite Saturn is quite a common one, often an unlucky one because all political dreams do end in failure. 
So <laughs> I think that's sowing a seed early on. Maybe it's because Rishi's going to stab her in the back and shove her aside at some point, right? I think it's quite interesting that we have her Mercury conjunct Saturn there because it means that Pluto in Capricorn transiting Pluto has been opposing that position. Pluto opposing Saturn and Mercury indicate this intense burning desire, ambition, possibly a little bit of intrigue, possibly a lot of uh, stuff going on behind the scenes, a lot of manipulation, maybe a little bit of backstabbing. Yeah, I'd say she's a political manipulator at the moment and is easing herself into position. So that shows a lot of kind of almost chess-like moves going on. We have here Mars in Taurus, which is on 17 degrees of Taurus. It will be conjuncted by um, Uranus later this year, which brings thrusts her into the limelight, into a whole new position. Her life is quite a whirlwind. It's very exciting, meeting lots of new people, juggling a lot of balls. That shows a huge amount of, of change, stimulation and excitement, meeting lots of new people in her life. Uranus in Taurus is a lot about politics, so that's possible. Transiting Saturn in Aquarius will be squaring that position at some point as well, which means a lot of hard work getting your feet under the table, getting organized. So all in all, I'm, I'm seeing a lot going on in this chart. Oh, bear in mind here, Jupiter, 24 degrees of Aries, that's also being squared by transiting Pluto. And that's the power angle. Pluto squared Jupiter, power and money. And we know when these people get power, political power, very soon they get money. Like... Um, Tony Blair, he wasn't a particularly successful barrister as he was on a prime minister's salary for a few years, 10 years or however long it was, which is not enormous. But now he's a multi, multi billionaire. So the money tends to come as soon as you get into these positions. So Pluto, transiting Pluto, is also triggering the Neptune opposite Saturn square Jupiter thing that you have going on, this little T-square. That's quite powerful. In fact, it's more than a T-square. It's a double cross because we've got there Uranus in Libra as well. So it's Pluto is triggering this grand cross, and I think that means she's going to be very politically active. There's a lot of power potential here. You see the organization. Also a lot of stress. I think she's also going to be in that position where she loses friends because once you get into that position of the top job, um, you do get very, very cut off when you enter a whole new realm, as I talked about when I talked about my New Year's Eve, I think it was part four, when I talked about the Dellingpod interview with Jennifer Aquiri about Boris Johnson. You do enter a very different realm and you have quite a strong initiation stroke hazing when you become prime minister. And that may be represented by Neptune, solar arc opposite Saturn, the whole occult thing going on. So there you go. Guys, I think Liz Truss has an excellent chance of being the next Prime Minister. I haven't looked at Rishi's because, as I say, not a lot going on. There wasn't an awful lot for me to say. But as you can tell, there's quite a lot going on in the transits in terms of Mars in 17 degrees of Taurus being activated conjunction by transiting Uranus in square by transiting Saturn. You've got... Uh, the solar arc Saturn and solar arc Jupiter, both triggering Venus, which is a lot about negotiations, diplomacy, politics, uh, especially if it is in the ninth house, as suggested here, but we don't necessarily know that. Her solar arc moon may be close to Jupiter, which also indicates luck, prestige, um, social attainment, reward, which a big, and also the confidence of her peers which would all be happening. And we have uh, transiting Pluto triggering this grand square in a cardinal signs, right? Which also indicates a lot of power, ambition, attainment, and just being at the top of her game. So let's look out for Liz Truss. I think it's going to be, well, I'd say there's a very good chance it's Liz Truss, unless someone else comes up from the outside that we haven't thought of yet, but I'll keep my eye on them all. Hope you're having a good day, guys.